What's going on beautiful people? Sometimes I just fancy making a beautiful scape. I get an idea in my head and I just want to do it. And that's literally just happened. Today I want to do a scape in one of my tanks that I've got up on this rack here. <laughs> the baboon just started jumping at the top because I've come near them. Um, yeah, I want to do like an old school traditional aquascape, do you know what I mean? It's just like the retaining wall, something in the middle, stuff all around it, nothing groundbreaking, but I think it'll look really good for the fish I've got in mind, but also be very simple for you guys to do as well. You'll get that sort of aquascaping nature aquarium look for low cost and very easy to do. You get a lot of bang for your buck with these style of tanks. So up on the rack at the moment, we've currently got this tank growing out. That's not gonna be ready for a while, but it's uh, it doesn't look like anything at the moment, but every single plant here is gonna be a bright red one, so I'm looking forward to that. Empty tank in the middle, and then we've already got a scape tank in the end that's more of a sort of bonsai style. So I think like by contrast, it's gonna be great to have like a traditional style one in the middle here for the fish. Now, most of you will probably be familiar with the term low tech. It basically means really low budget light and a filter, sometimes no filter as well. And on the flip side, most of you are familiar with high tech. We tend to use that for expensive lighting, a CO2 system, you know, like high end filters as well, built in heaters, that kind of thing. I don't think anyone uses the term medium tech, so we're gonna start it now. I'm gonna call this one medium tech because the lighting isn't budget, the, the whole setup isn't budget. There's much cheaper options available, but it is very, very affordable and not what I would call high end. You know, for a 60 centimeter or two foot setup that's high end, you're looking at thousands, to be honest. Most kits you get like that are about 1,500 pounds or, you know, $1,900, $1,800, that kind of thing. Whereas this whole kit you can buy for like 140 pounds, $170. I mean, that's crazy, right? When you think of everything you're getting for that price, like you can't go wrong and it looks so good. And the tank that we're gonna be using is the Superfish Scaper 90. You can buy the whole thing as a kit and it comes with this amazing light that I know grows plants really well. You also get a nifty little filter included that I'm gonna be putting on later on. But for now, the tank is really dirty, so it does need cleaning. So that's the tank clean. It's it's not perfect, of course, but uh, as I always say, this is not a tank cleaning channel, it's a tank building channel. So let's just move on. Once it's filled up with water, I always find it's easier to clean any bits anyway, because you've got the water in, you can just scrape it. So yeah, just crack off. Some people I've seen, they spend hours getting it all perfect. I, I am not that guy. <laughs> and because we're going for a low budget build, that's why I've suggested the kit from Superfish. It's available in a range of sizes, and I honestly cannot see where you can get a better deal for quality the ability to grow plants. Yeah, it's just got everything, it's so good. And this video is not sponsored or anything by them, it's just, that's what I'm using and uh, I'm just showing you guys as well. But anyway, now the fun bit begins and we can start adding in our hardscape. So for these type of tanks, I find it's much better just to start with your hardscape and just build a sort of barrier at the front or a retaining wall. Serious stone is probably gonna be your best option because it's so readily available and also it tends to be the cheapest of the aquascaping rocks. I mean, another cheaper way would be just to go and source your own if you really want to. But you do get sort of nice character with the serious stone with all the lines and you know different shapes. It's not too rounded. It gives angles which allows you to keep the retaining wall looking a little bit like cool and different so to start with just start getting your rocks in there place them so they stand up once you've got a few in you can start manipulating them a little bit to I don't know create a wall that might not even stay how it is now to be honest oh there's a bit of glue on there better get that off hey -ya. got it so yeah, we want to just keep that line going using multiple rocks. Some people say that you should angle all the lines together. By the time you've planted everything, I don't think that makes a huge amount of difference. But if you want to, you can do that, spend a little bit more time on it. I just find at this stage, it's good just to get some sort of shape going. Don't want to make it too straight. So like little indentations is good as well. You can see how it curves slightly inwards there. Probably go back a little bit more actually, put that rock behind that one. And you just add in a little bit more character to that foreground area rather than a perfectly straight line. And I have a smaller one over here to close the gap. If you want to close the gap, that is, uh, you can keep it open so that some of the plants sort of blend round. It's, it's completely up to you, but right now we've got a cool S shape going on there and I find that looks good. Now it is quite flat though, so it's like it's following a straight line. So I'd, ideally I'd like to be able to raise this rock up a bit like that, which we can easily do by putting another rock underneath. So I've got a more sort of flat one there. 
place that down. Put this one on top. And there we go, instant height changes and elevations. It just looks better, I think. Now we can fill in the other side, which we can bring lower. Might be some wood that can come in this section. We can even come right forward just to sort of accentuate, if that's the right word, this, this S shape. Or I would say we can come and give it more angle like that as well. I think that works really well. And then I can bring this one out a little bit more. I've got this longer rock, which will work quite well. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Although I can see a lot of uh, soil flooding over this area at some point. So I'm gonna put another little rock behind it as well. Yeah, there we go, it just closes that area a little bit. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps in between the rocks there. So if we filled that in at the back with Aquasaur right now, it would all just spill through into like the decorative sand in the foreground, because that's the look we're going for. And we don't want that to happen. So I've got this old like pieces of foam from some of my filters. I'm just snipping this one down to make it a little bit thinner so it'll cover more of an area. And then it'll go in those cracks a little bit better as well. And there's two and three now. I can cut these up into sort of like quarters and then I should be able to fill any of the gaps with it. Now I'm not too worried about these lower areas because we're gonna have like gravel butted up against the edges anyway. It's more of the sort of higher points. So for instance, I've got a piece here and if I can just sort of get that to grip in a little bit without destroying the whole scape, that'll be nice. I can see a decent sized one back here as well. Can be a little bit fiddly, but it's definitely worth the effort. Now that's most of the gaps filled in. Don't worry if you can still see it a little bit at the moment. You won't later on when we put some plants in that over it and we can snip it to whatever level we want as well. So now I wanna add gravel and sand into that foreground section and that should sort of lock everything in place to a degree and stop all the soil in the background area when we put it in coming through those smaller gaps. So to start with, I'm gonna add in our foreground sort of decorative sand. Just pour that in initially. Pile it up a little bit near the rocks there and we can actually fill in the gaps with it as well. Now I don't want a huge amount of this, just enough to uh, you know, look pretty. Then I can push the piled parts back a little bit underneath the rocks. Right, that is cool. And now here I've got this like mix of gravel and stuff. And I can just put that right on the edges of where the rocks sort of meet the sand and it'll tie it in and it'll close gaps. Yeah, I'm really liking that. It's amazing how much the scene just transforms with only two components. Like it actually looks like something you'd see in a film, like a cowboy in West, I don't know what I'm saying. So now we can get on to putting the nutrients in the background section. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of pond soil, which is like compost with most of the organic -y stuff removed. I think they like float off the organic stuff, scoop it out and whatever you're left with at the bottom is what goes in the tank. So it doesn't float all around everywhere, but I like to mix it with some gravel as well to stop it sort of compacting and turning all nasty. So what I want to do is take some gravel. It's not too coarse. So you see there, that's the sort of coarseness of it. Pour that in. couple of jugfuls and then the same amount of the aquatic compost as well. You can get aquatic compost from most like pond places, garden centres, that kind of thing. It's really, really cheap. Usually I use the Nutri base, don't I? But this stuff, I've run out of that and this is a really, really good alternative doing it this way. Then it's just a case of uh, mixing it all together. And then we can just place this in the background area. Think of it like a power sand, if you like, but just nowhere near as expensive. And then on top of that, we can place some aqua soil. I'm using Flora Base Pro from Colombo. We get really good results with it, and uh, yeah, it's a quality product, to be honest. And it literally just sits on top. 
and fill up from the back obviously so it doesn't just completely overshoot the wall we've made. We're also creating height here which means that our plants will straight away be sat quite nicely and high above that rock line. So we're looking really good now, nutrients taken care of, but I want to add some wood into the whole structure. And I'm thinking something like pointy, like three points might look really good in here. Now I am currently a little bit low on wood because we created this, which is just so much wood in it. But I've got half decent selection, should be able to make something work. So I've managed to find this nice big piece here, but it might be too big. We'll see, I wanna get it in position. That's the sort of angle I want at that back area. It needs to tilt back slightly so that the light can go more central. Okay, that's looking cool. It's kind of what I wanna go for. This straight line that you can see here, a little bit ugly, but we can tie that in quite nicely as well. Yeah, so from straight on, that's the look I, I wanna go for, those big prongs coming up. But we definitely need something this side as well to balance it out. And I've got this big old piece as well, which might work, I'm not sure yet. I quite like that it's coming into the foreground. I kinda want it like that, but then this wood looks weird. It needs to go much lower. Just gotta try and work with what you got. Okay, here's what I come up with. It's, uh, it's quite straight up, but I wanted to go for that because I never ever normally do straight up pieces. And I just think it could work really well with all those plants behind it as well. In doing so, I've brought this area here slightly more forward, but that's fine. And there's also now that gap, which we can close off with more of that gravel. There we go, look, that's that taken care of. Now, if you want at this point, you could put in more rocks wherever you want to bring them in. You know, you can just bring it up higher in certain areas. You might want to fill in this area. And obviously there's this area here that's quite like sort of low. I'm not going to because I wanted to see shorter plants in these areas. And if we put more rock there, we're not going to see that. So I'm going to stick with what we've got there. I think it looks really cool and it leaves loads of room for plants as well. But what we definitely need to do is glue this wood down. It's going to float otherwise. Choose some contact points that are right close to the rock. I'm going to use paper towel and cyanoacrylate glue, just the liquid kind. It all sort of binds it together, goes like rock and then it won't move. That's all done and glued down. A laborious task, one that I really don't enjoy out of the whole process, if I'm honest. It's just not exciting, is it? But it is worth taking your time with it. I've had too many instances where I haven't taken my time with it or put enough glue points and the wood just snaps off and floats up. Just when you're at that point where it's looking great and you're filling it up with water. So yeah, take your time with it. But now it's time for the planting. This is actually my most favorite part. I like the hardscape but just ahead is the planting because it's when it really does come to life. Now I've got quite a lot of plants to choose from that you guys probably aren't gonna have as much access to, but that's the thing, I'm gonna be creating this so it's sort of done straight away. So take what I've got and put it in half and then it can all sort of grow in at a steady pace. Within a month or two, it should be looking really full. I always like to try and get it looking full straight away so it's like the finished product. It's just better for the video, better for the fish and you know myself as well. It means that I can just step back from it and I know it's gonna do great straight away without a lot of attention because basically the more plants you put in your tank, even from the setup, the more chance, or the less chance of like algae blooms or any problems with like water quality as well. So yeah, I always think you should put back at least a third of your budget for just plants alone. Alternatively, you could start planting and not put any fish in and just wait till you've got it all looking really great and put the fish in later. Obviously, that's not what we're doing on this video. <laughs> so down here, we have got a lot of really nice plants to choose from. There's loads of Anubias types in there, Bulbitus. There's all of the Java ferns we can choose from. There's a ton of Crips in here, more um, ferns. And there's also at the back there, look at how good that looks at the back. That's Hygrophila pinnatifida and it's just growing to the top of the uh, tank. It looks amazing, doesn't it? And then on this side, I've got more sort of stems growing nicely. I've got boosters in the foreground, large Anubius there, which is not suitable for this setup, I would say. I've got some Cryptolanci at the back, that'll look good streaming over. And we've got some Echinodorus at the back as well. But again, I think I'll save that for bigger tanks. And all of the plants that you can see in the fish wall here are not planted, except for this tank here, that's got the Achilles in. It's obviously all planted, but the rest, 
is all sort of on rocks, so I can take out anything I need and just plonk it straight in. But I always find with setups like this, really good to just start with the ferns, get your ferns in the right place, and the rest sort of takes care of itself then. So to start with, I've got this beautiful Java fern Windelof, and you can see there's some bad leaves, but it's not a problem. Any you see like that, they literally just come off. So just take your time, go through it, pick out the bad ones. Then you're left with the really nice green and more will grow in place. So straight away, this middle section here is screaming for the uh, for the Java fern, and I'm gonna just place it initially just to see how it looks, but, oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. I want it a little bit off center, so you can still see a gap down this side, just about. I've just pushed it into a little gap, and that should lock it all down. It tends to look better when you can put the bottom at the bottom, if you know what I mean, so that the uh, the fern sort of sits upright. I like the way that's trailing in the foreground as well. That looks cool. So straight away, it just looks like it's been there forever, doesn't it? Love that, that little gap there as well in the middle. Yeah, working perfect. Feel like we need another one this side, but smaller, and that'll just balance it out really nicely. And this piece here should do nicely. I'm gonna tuck it into the gap. Oh, there we go, look at how good that looks. <laughs> perfect already, if you ask me. Now, a really good way of filling in gaps, like obviously this big dark bit here, um, tying in the background to the foreground so it sort of merges in like a natural way, including this one here. You can use pieces of Anubius. Because you're placing it down low, it's receiving less light and it's often in these shaded areas and it does really well in those, to be honest. I've had it growing in just buckets before with no light at all. So yeah, new, different Anubius types in those areas should tie it in really nice. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving that. To be honest, you could just do a tank like this without the substrate at the back if you wanted to reduce the, the costs even more and just have something like that and then the, the fish swimming around. It would be a really nice tank, to be honest. I'm going to be adding plants at the back as well, stem plants, just because it makes life so much easier you know, through the progression of the tank. The more plants you've got, the faster they're growing, the more nutrients they're pulling out of the water and just easier, it just makes everything easy. But to put the plants in, I like to fill the tank up, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, we're filled up and we are looking nice. And now we can move on to the planting. As I said, this area here, I wanna be able to see some of the plants coming up, but I'm thinking if I keep it high on one side, not a lot or nothing in that middle section. I like that little gap. And then come up the other side again as well. I think that'll give us a really, really nice sort of front view, but also leave some good negative space as well. And I'm gonna use some of my established tanks to take the plants from. This is actually really helpful. So if you guys have got multiple tanks, always take trimmings. If not, it's okay. It doesn't mean that it won't work. It just means it can take a little bit more time for the plants to get settled in and growing. So I set up this tank for my rice fish a little over a month ago now. And the uh, pearl weed, for instance, in the front here is outgrowing all of the glossy stigma. So that needs cutting back. I'm gonna use some of that as well. It's just a really nice plant. It doesn't grow too fast, if I'm honest, and it, it, it does, but it's easy to, to maintain. You just snip, snip, job done. And as you can see here, my angelfish tank has gone absolutely nuts. That's Hygophila polysperma. Um, if I do use that, I only want a little bit of it because as you can see, it grows crazy. But what I do want here is Lobelia cardinalis, I think it's called. Um, that'll look really good in those foreground sections. And it's not a fast grow as well, but gives a nice texture. So as said, taking plants from another tank that's already established is a massive bonus. And to be honest, when I first got into keeping fish tanks, planted fish tanks, the first thing I did was buy a second tank because when my first tank started to grow in, I just couldn't bring myself to throw away any trimmings that I couldn't put back in the original tank. So my wife was away on like a head and do or bachelorette do, whatever you call it. And I went out and bought another tank because I knew she wouldn't let me if she was home. Set that up, planted all the trimmings in. I didn't even put a filter in the tank and it just took off. And that's sort of what got me into real low tech stuff as well. So yeah, I thoroughly recommend if you've got one tank in your house, just get another one, another little one somewhere. You can do it. 
So I'm planting the lobelia in this little front bit. It's such a nice looking plant, isn't it? It stays really vibrant and green. It'll actually grow a lot taller than it is right now as well. But then you've got to be mindful of heights of your plants. You can look all this stuff up online if you need to. So this one's going to sit in the front and we've got taller plants behind it and then I'll put even taller plants behind that. Now pearlweed is a fantastic plant that can really, really help you if you're doing sort of low tech or anything like that. Because it grows fast, it pulls the nutrients out. It looks really vibrant and clean as well. I don't really know what I mean by clean, but hopefully you do. I find that because it's such compact leaves and small leaves, it gives more of a high tech look, even though it's a low tech tank. Or in this case, I call it medium tech, but I know that this plant works really well with super low lighting as well. You've just got to make sure that you've got those nutrients down at the root system and it just grows really good. It spreads as well. So, you know, one small area like this will actually turn into a much larger area because it sends out horizontal runners as well as growing up. I decided to add the nymphoides on this side. It's just a completely different texture of what else is going on. And it's also given height to that background area. And what medium to low tech tank would be complete without Limnophila sessiliflora. Absolute staple in this game. Again, another fast grower. Can grow kind of leggy if you leave it to its own devices, but trim it regularly and it stays nice and bushy. And you can just push the stems back into roughly the same areas where you planted. Even if they're not in the substrate, the roots will work their way down and they'll find it. And I'm adding some of the Hygrophila polysperma just because it helps with tones, taking up space as well in the back area, just filling it out a little bit more. It's also gonna create depth. We've got all those different textures going on. So the effect right now is looking so good. Really pleased with it. It's got a proper natural vibe to it. But I do wanna add something that I think is gonna make a little bit of a, I don't know, a pop in certain areas. So in my archer fish tank, I've got quite a lot of Hygrophila pinnatifida growing. It's just like spreading everywhere as the plant does. It's due to trim back, so I'm gonna take some from there. And also over here in one of the superficial all-in-one tanks, you can see here the Hygrophila pinnatifida is growing so nicely. It's got real awesome pinky and orange hues to it and that's gonna stand out massively. And what's great about this plant is it's also an epiphyte, so we don't need to plant it into the substrate. I can literally just poke it in gaps in the java fern and it will sort of attach itself with roots and just continue to grow and spread. So that's looking really great. And time to get a filter in there now, get it crystal clear and ready for the fish. So it was actually the next day that I fit the filter and as you can see, the water's gone a little bit murky overnight. Now this is completely normal when you've got wood in the tank. Some wood tends to do it more than others. This wood I'd say is kind of like a medium amount of tannins that get released. When you use things like spider wood, it doesn't tend to leach anything at all, to be honest. Now this wood will actually leach less than others because I've used it in tanks before. That's why it's already got that nice sort of darker tone to it. Once the filter was fitted, all I needed to do was prime it. And to do that, you just fill it up with water and turn it on. And that sort of just pulls the water in through the snorkel, fills up the chamber even more, and then you're flowing. Now the cartridges in this filter, you can remove them and just do something else. You can put in like lava stones or ceramic rings or whatever you want really, but I find that they just work really well. They've got these little filter pads on them, the fine, fine floss stuff, and it seems to polish the water up brilliantly. You can remove them and clean them as well. So yeah, you can upgrade and put different things in that you want to do, but I just find this does the job perfectly and there's no need to. And me being as impatient as I am, I couldn't be bothered to wait for the water to clear, so I've just done 100% water change. No problem with doing this on a new setup. You're actually going to remove any of the sort of floating biological pieces and things in the water column anyway. Plus, there would have been some fine dust from the aquasaur that's in the water column, and we don't really want that. It's going to cause algae later on. So that's now looking a lot better. I've also added a little bit of AccuClear as well because there's still a slight mist in. That'll just be some particles that got stirred up from the water change. But within an hour, this should be looking perfect and crystal clear and I can put my fish in as well as some beneficial bacteria as well. And there we go, guys. Look, an hour later and look at how clear and beautiful that's looking. I'm really, really pleased with the result, actually, because it's simple but still looks, I think, like it's medium tech, you know, like we said. Although even with lower tech, this setup would still work. It's just gonna perform even better with a little bit higher lighting and just looks better with the nice glass, you know, that iron, low iron glass. I just think it looks beautiful, but it's time for the fish to go in. And these are the fish in this tank here. We've got some really, really nice guppies. Look at these. So we've got several females and males. The females are bursting with babies already. So we're gonna get babies in there in no time. To be honest, I'll try and catch the babies that I can and probably put them back in this tank. So some of the males, you can see there's been a little bit of sparring between them. Like, look at that male there, his uh, tail fin. 
is a little bit torn. I mean, there's not a huge amount of hiding spaces in this tank, but there'll be plenty for them in the new tank. So I've collected the fish up. We've got four females and two males. So that's a good ratio. So putting them in, I don't actually know what kind of guppies these are. So if you guys want to tell me in a minute, that would be great. For now, we'll just call them really beautiful guppies. There we go straight away. Look, moving around the tank really nicely. Now, the interesting thing about these guys is that the females look just as nice as the males, which you don't normally get with the, uh, with the guppies. The, the females normally look a little bit drab, a little bit unsettled to start with, but they're, they're gonna get the use of the tank quickly. Hopefully they'll stay still a little bit in a minute. We can see some of the colors. There we go, look at that. Look at the amount of babies in that female. And don't worry, the flow is absolutely fine. I've put a deflector here, look, on the, um, on the outlet for the filter, and it's just a little piece of plastic that hooks under and just flicks all the water forward along the surface so that way that all of the, of the plants underneath don't get battered. Oh yeah, look at those males in the middle there. Like metallic, blue metallic, I get. I mean, that's what I'm feeling anyway. Let me know what you think or if you know what they're called. Now remember, this is a new setup, so I'm gonna add some beneficial bacteria as well. That's just gonna further colonize inside the tank and also the filter. So what that technically makes this is a fish in cycle. Now, if you're gonna do a fish in cycle, you need to make sure that you're keeping the stocking level low to begin with. Six little fish in this tank with this amount of plants is not gonna to touch the surface or the sides or something uh, with ammonia or anything like that. But I will test the water daily until I see that there's like absolutely no ammonia. I might get a slight amount tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see any on day two, to be honest, with this amount of fish. But saying that, the wood will probably release a few more tannins, so I'll just do a water change anyway. So after a day, the guppies were fully coloured up and looking amazing. So the colours on the males now, fully popping, looking fantastic. But even the females as well. Look at this female here at the bottom. Just so much colour and all the plants are now fully stood upright and they're literally growing straight away. And one of the best things about a tank like this is the ease of maintenance. Because most of the plants in the foreground are just epiphytes, it means that they grow nice and slowly. We've basically only got the sections left and right to trim when they hit the surface and just replug the trimmings back into the soil. And I have no doubt that this tank is gonna be full of babies in no time at all. I would say that this is one of the easiest styles of tank to do if you're going for that nature look, but don't have a massive budget. I mean, all in all, it's about five or six rocks and a couple of pieces of wood. And the cost of the plants is gonna depend on the density that you wanna plant to start with. If you can afford a little bit more, I really suggest you do that. I think it's really satisfying to get that full look straight away. And to be honest, ferns do tend to do that for you. Most ferns you buy are gonna be quite large. So they're gonna take up space and give you that big green pop for the lowest amount of cost, I would say. And with a tank like this, there is potential to plant Amazon swords in the back as well. Again, you get a lot of green leaf for your money with those, but I just feel like a tank like this looks better with more, I don't know, smaller leafed plants and it just creates that scale then. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Give it a go. If you're contemplating and you don't have a tank yet, just do something like this. You cannot go wrong and I think it looks great straight away. Imagine having this in your living room when people come in. It's the sort of thing that's gonna start a conversation straight away, right? Anyway, really enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next one.